Hello everyone. This episode gonna introduce how to simply use Dolphin Scheduler and publish shell task. First, we need to check whether our Dolphin Scheduler services is running regularly. And the Dolphin Scheduler contains the following five main services. API Application Server is service responsible for providing interfaces calling for UI APIs. Master Server is service responsible for whole workflow scheduling service. Worker Server is service responsible for specified workflow handling. Logger Server is service responsible for record task running status. Alert Server is service responsible for alerting abnormal and failure workflows. And we execute the command to check whether processes are running. After ensuring services are normal, we are going to visit the login page. The URL is IP with port 1234 and the URI pass is slash dolphin scheduler. We sign in with the default admin account. The username is admin and the password is dolphin scheduler 1234. After signing, we come to the security page. Above all, we are going to configure user and workflow basic info. Our overall processes are create tenant, check queue, create user, configure new warning group, view worker group, and then shift to new user to execute workflow. The first menu tab is tenant. The tenant corresponds to the Linux user, which is the user used by the worker to submit job. If the user in exists on Linux, the worker will create this user when executing scripts. We create a new tenant named uh, tenant underscore 002 and use the default queue. Queue is only valid for task running on Yarn. You can create it here, but we will not create them because shell tasks that we gonna implement have nothing to do with yarn. Just use the default queue. Then we click user management. Create a new user. Fill in the login information. and bend the new tenant and default queue to this user. Then we create a new alarm group named alarm underscore double o one. Select the email notification and add a new user to this alarm group. After version 1.3.0, Dolphin Scheduler read worker configuration information directly from Zookeeper. Then the initial configuration is complete. Under normal situation, we will not use the admin count to run workflow tasks because we can see that admin doesn't configure tenants and queues by default. If you must use admin, you need to specify tenants and queues 
for admin account first. After completing the new user configuration, we switch to the new account user underscore 001. Then we will practice the following steps. Create process definition, run process, manage process instance, timeout rerun, and pause. Create resource file. First, we enter the project management. Create a new project. Then, click into the project. Select process definition. And create a new process for the project. Then, we enter the edit page of DAG. We can add various types of tasks by dragging and dropping, such as shell, sub-process, procedure, SQL, Spark, Flink, MapReduce, Python, Dependent, HTTP, DataX, Scoop, and Conditions. Let's take a simple shell task as an example. Drag and drop the shell task node to the canvas to edit our task settings. First, fill in the node name. The, the wrong flag indicates whether this task node is executed when we run the entire process. Just omit the description. Task priority means that when the thread resource is insufficient, the priority of task execution will be arranged and processed according to the selected priority. Then we choose the default worker. If we set one time field retries and the one minute failure interval, it means that if the task fails, the task will be retried once one minute later. The timeout alarm includes timeout alarm and a timeout failure. The timeout alarm means that an alarm will be thrown out if the task is bare timeout duration. Timeout failure means that the process result would be a failure if the timeout expires. We simply echo print a few status in the shell scripts. Shell task start, running, and finished. Resource refer to the resource in the resource file management. We skip here for no resources configured. Custom parameters indicate the parameter values we can set for this task. For example, if we set a parameter with key name and the value dolphin, we can use the parameter by dollar and braces symbol. We only set up one shell task node in the whole process. Then we save the process, skip the description, and select the new tenant, tenant 002. The timeout alarm refers to the entire process. The previous alarm is for a single task node. Here, we do not set a timeout. We can set global variables here. Here we add a global parameter, global underscore age. 
with the value of 18 to save the entire process. Then enter into the shell task again. First, get the global age in the custom parameters and then use the global parameter by dollar and braces symbol in the script. After finish the process definition, we are ready to run the process. First, ensure that the process is online, and then click Run button. The failure strategy is designed for parallel tasks. Suppose there are two parallel tasks a and B. After task A, there are many subtask nodes from A1, A2 to AN, and there are many subtask nodes after task B2. If task A fails, choosing to continue does not affect the execution of task B. If you choose to end, if task A fails, task B is no longer executed, and the entire workflow is in a failure state. Notification strategy sets how to trigger notifications, and these options will send whether to send notifications according to different results. Process priority also refers to a condition when there are insufficient threats. It will be executed according to this priority sequence, and we select the default worker group. We could select alarm underscore 001 as notification group. We can fill in the recipient and the carbon copy as needed. and uh, about complement, including two modes, serial complement and parallel complement. Serial complement means within a specified time range, execute the complements from the start date to the end date every each day and generate process instance parallel complement means within the selected time range. Multiple days are complemented at the same time and generate process instance. Then we run it. After the process running, a process instance is generated. Click it. On the top of the page, we can see the global and custom parameter values and the startup parameters we configure. At the same time, we can see the time consuming just the seconds. Click to view the log. It is all printed here. Start. Running finish, and our custom parameters and global parameters are all shown. Although we set a timeout alarm, the process didn't timeout, so no alarm was triggered. Furthermore, we add a slip code to make script timeout. Then we save it. Here is the check whether to update the process definition. Because we are currently changing it in the instance, if checked, the modification will be changed to the process definition. 
If it is cancelled, the definition will not be affected. We check it and go to see the process definition side. It was also changed. Then we run it again. Here we need to wait 70 seconds. Currently, process instance is in executing status. Let's take a look at the resource page first. After version 1.3.0, we have added the folder and the file management. We can create a folder and uh, and create a new SH file. DS supports many file formats here, and we can create as needed. We write an echo script. and then save it, so that the file is done. Then we look at how to use resources. If you want to edit the process definition, you must put it offline first. Edit again here. We can select the file created just now as resource. Then we use SH to refer to run the resource and use a relative path. This is how to refer a resource file and then save it. Then we take a look at the process instance not sleep 70 seconds. Here it has failed once, and after the failure, it made a retry. It is still running in the retry. We check the field process instance log. Script after sleep code didn't execute. There isn't finish in the prints means that the process instance timed out and failed. Here, the process instance can be rerun, or it can be stopped, and the task in running can be suspended. The operation can be resumed after suspension, and the state could be switched. Then we run the process that reference or SH resource fail. First, put it online and run it. We wait for the log to see if the resource is referenced. This line is printed by the resource file, indicating that it was su successfully quoted. Finally, let's take a look at the project uh, homepage, where the statistics of a uh, execution results of a single project are counted. The home page counts the running result statistics of all projects. Well, today's process practice ends here. Thanks all.